Hey, all right, uh, my phone died, sorry. I'm um, gonna just show you where I am. So, this is this side now. Can't tell how it's picking up the color, but it's pretty much done. I'm gonna do a little bit of finish planning on it. Let's see, this is kind of a better view of the color. The color is really consistent from here. It's really hard to tell through the screen, but the color looks really good. I see all the crap that I planed off. And uh, I'm gonna do two parts here. I'm sure everybody wants to see sharpening shit, so I'm gonna do in the sharpening video real quick. And also, uh, I'm gonna try and show you. I know I screwed that other one up because I got out of frame. Hopefully you got something out of it, but I'm gonna sharpen a couple irons here. So, um, light doesn't lie. I don't know if you can see, you can see this one's dinged on the edge. Light shining off. It's a good way to check your irons. You can see light shining off the edge. It's dinged. This one's uh, pretty much a standard camber jack iron. About 8 inch to 10 inch camber. I'm going to sharpen this one first and I'm going to do my, uh, Finish plane, or one of my my handyman that's going to become a finish plane today. Show you the can be. Um, if you didn't see my previous video, watch it. But uh, this is just an oil stone. Just use some water on it. Yes, you can. Those of you that think you can't, I feel sorry for you. Um, I am not. Just to let you know, this iron, I am not going to be able to get past. That ding right there with what I have in the field here. So it's gonna be down and dirty sharpening. I don't see that ding on the edge. It's interesting, it might be an old rust mark. Uh, I can feel it, it's folded over there. It's just folded over. So since it's folded over, I'm gonna take that off first. So just taking the burr off the back. I'm not putting really any pressure on it, just making sure that there's no burr on the back. It's the only way that you can tell if you're sharpened out to the edge. There's still a little bit of a burr on the back. I'm just going to pick up slightly on the iron. You don't need any ruler tricks. I love that. No, I am not putting a back bevel on the iron. Just taking the burr off. I don't know if you can see this iron. This is irons from the 1800s. Auburn Tools iron, laminated. Um, can't really see it there. You don't care about that. But now there's no burr on the back. The only way you can tell if you sharpened out to the edge is to have a burr on the back. So, again, I like Costman's all his fingers on the uh, on the iron. And just use, you know, find the bevel. This one's hollow ground, so I don't need any micro bevel on it. Just right to the bevel. Just work my way around. All the way across. All the way back. Just saw the other one. Now I've got a burr on this side, burr on this side. Nothing really in the middle. You can do it one, one handed if you want. It's not that hard. There's way too much put into this, guys. Okay? Just gonna tell you now, there's way, way too much put into these jigs and all this other crap. You don't need it. This bevel on a bevel down needs to be between 40 and 25. If you can't get it between 40 and 25 by hand, you really should find another profession or another hobby. It's not that hard. It does not have to be 25. It does not have to be 32. I can tell you that the only time that you really have to worry about it, I think, is on A2 irons getting that. You want to get your bevel up above 30 on the uh, steeper than 30 on the A2 irons or the micro fracture, but it's really the only time. I like Crossman, but I will tell you it's a flaw in his sharpening method as far as I'm concerned. Not that he doesn't get his shit sharp. You can see him playing, he gets his stuff sharp, no doubt. 
$250 Shapton. This is an old oil stone, not sure of the make. Um, if you didn't watch my other video, I explain a lot of this stuff and I got out of frame and I'm sorry, but um, I don't even know what the grid is on this. If you use non-concentric circles, even on an old oil stone like this, the oil stone will start getting finer and finer and finer. You'll wear the, the surface smooth until you surface again. You can surface it with a diamond plate if you want, just like you do on water stones. All right, I'll get a burr all the way across now. I don't know if you can, I'll try to get my finger dirty so I can show you. So I'll see the, the burr catching the dirt. All right. So I have a burr all the way across. This is the Flan Cosman's method. He goes right from his diamond stone to the 16,000. He never takes the burr off. I don't know when I get up to my higher stone. If I've sharpened all the way to the edge, if I don't take that burr off. Now, I'm not honing a micro bevel, I mean a back bevel or anything. I'm just taking the burr off. That's it. I'm going to, this one, obviously at some point has been um, ruler tricked, so to speak. So I'm going to lift up on it a little bit. I have just about no pressure. I'm just, burr is just about gone. There's a little teeny bit of the burr over here where there's some damage to this. I'm just going to take that off. Now you can see, hopefully this will, this will show up in the light right, but you can see right across the edge is a real fine, dinky, thin line where that burr came off, where the burr was folded over and it flattened it off and it makes a line across that. It's not a back bevel. You cannot remove metal of any degree with no pressure going like this, even if you lift up on the back. Okay, all you're doing is just taking off the burr, okay? It's not a back bevel. Don't say it, don't hear it. Do not write it in the comments. I don't want to hear it. You're wrong if you write it in the comments. This stone is a, uh, burrs back around in the front now, by the way. This stone is um, a natural stone out of Japan. I'm not really sure the grid it's advertised is 13,000. In the beginning, it wouldn't cut. As I've used it and conditioned it, it cuts wonderful. It's the only other stone that I need now. I don't... I have a million stones, a million methods. Um, part of my business is to sharpen edge tools. A logger just dropped off this Grand Force Brooks that I have to sharpen for him. So it's part of my business. I sharpen every kind of edge tool there is. I have every method to do it. This stone right here does a, is go from a diamond plate to this. Nothing else is needed. Burrs all the way across. Just gonna take it off. I don't need to do any more than take it off. And raise up a little bit, polish the back. It's gone. It is a little bit back to the front. Um, on these cambered irons like this one is, I can make some swishing motions just to even out that curve. Make sure, yeah, I got a little bit of a burr, so I'm chasing the burr around a little bit. I'm going to take that off with the straw here in a second. I'm raising up just a little bit. Again, so you can see, try to get the light right, and the, I don't know if, hopefully it's in focus, but yeah, it looks, having a hard time with my glasses seeing this. You can see just the finest edge across there. This one's done. I'm going to strop it. You don't have to. You can have your own thoughts on strops if you want. I'll show you the edge. If I get it in the light right. I don't know if I can or not. But you know, it's pretty polished. It looks fine. I'm just going to... Now on a cambered iron, you kind of have to work your straw back and forth. Try to do 20 or so. This is bare. There's no compound on it. Just a piece of granite with a 
good hard piece of leather that was an off cut from a canvas company. I do the back, I just push down and pull back. Down and pull back. I try to do the same number of strokes. You can see. Now if I had nicked that on the edge right there, that would be showing a line on the show a line on the strop. Strop's a good way to check if you've got any nicks too. So you don't when you're stropping, you'll make a line on the strop if it's got a nick on it. Alright, so this one's finished. Let's see if it's sharp. I'm just so I'll get you guys. You can see that it's sharp. That's my hair right there. Okay? And I'm sharp. Let me do one more out of my handyman because I'm going to take my. Little handyman here, garbage plane, and friggin' finished plane. 100 year, 200 year old white oak end grain. This one, let's just give, I'll give you a look at the iron. Okay, uh, standard straight across, 25 degree bevel, fairly flat back. This one obviously has been ruler tricked at some point. I can see the, I used to use the ruler trick. I mean, I used to write, write with Sharpie on the back of degrees and whether it had a, you know, the ruler trick I was using and all that crap. Guys, set yourselves free. You don't need to do all that stuff. You want to watch somebody sharpen who is a master, watch David W. on YouTube. David W. is awesome, plane builder. trying to introduce the smart now if I was in the shop too I, I, I'd keep a square next to me and I check to make sure that I, you know my irons are square and if they're a little out then I'll work that one side Using water and oil stone. Works fine. Actually, you can see it beating up over here a little bit. Still do not have a burr on this one. This one's been pretty deep. I've used it on a job the last week or so. I just had it sitting in a tote of tools. And I wondered if well, I'm stuck. I got a burr on the side here. Still nothing over there. So I didn't know how sharp it was coming here in the first place. It looked good. Nice and shiny, there wasn't any nicks on it. It's been a little bit difficult. Let me try and work. Work the bevel a little bit. You can see it was shiny before. You can see how it's all like milky now. Getting close. Just haven't worked out to the edge yet. Sorry, this one's taking so long. It normally doesn't. I have, I have, you know, in my shop, I have a. a I would be using a diamond plate, but my diamond plate's on a job. Well, I'm using chisels, chiseling off some black oak logs. So I just had this one in. Now we go. Now I'm starting to get a burr. Trying to make 
make sure that I keep the edges rounded off. Do not want it flat. Put a nice part in the middle. Still not all the way up to the edge on the side. The sound is picking up the noise difference in the, in the stone here. It's wicked fine here. And it's cutting really coarse in the middle here. Burr all the way across now. I'm gonna lay some dirt on my fingers so you can see it. Grabbing the dirt there. Oops, sorry. Grabbing the dirt off my finger there. There's a burr all the way across. I gotta take the burr off. There's one. sure you can see that. Yeah. It's all, it's all the way across. Let's see if I can show you again. So, do you do? Show you in a serious hair though. Just pulling the dirt off my finger. Just get the burr off. That's it, no pressure. Still a teeny bar over here on the edge. Feels like it's gone. So you can see, hopefully you can see. It's that teeny. I didn't get the light just right. Can't really see it.
There's no back bevel on it. So it's sharp. Okay. See that? It's sharp. It's not just picking off hairs. It's shaving my arm. This iron is already, this iron right here, which is a standard Stanley iron, and for whatever reason, sometimes you get these and they're good and sometimes they're bad, but the one in the handyman's really good. I have already made a pass, finished planing, across this entire chunk, dirty ass old chunk out of the USS Constitution. I've already made a pass across this whole thing, finished planing it, okay? with this iron. So it was not sharp before I just did what I did. Now it's shaves my arm perfectly. Just with that right there. Two stones. Old. Some sort of Norton blue stone. I don't know what manufactured it is. I made this. And this cheapo, I think they sell these out of Woodcraft. Um, natural stone. I like the natural stone because of the size and the heft and it doesn't need to be set on anything. So those two are done. Uh, my phone went dead last time, but I want to show you and plane it off. So see here, I'm going to start on the other side in a minute. You see there's a couple little chunks where they cut it. And I'm taking those off with the scrub plane, the one I sharpened in the last video. And uh, I'll do this one right here. I don't know how if you can tell how big that is, but it's up at least, and this is dirty too, so it's up at least, I don't know, maybe 3 sixteenths. So I will, I'm going to plane that off. I wonder if I can get you right here. Hmm, that looks good. I'm going to try to plane it off right there. The old compass, I don't want to love to see that. This is a piece of junk plane. It's not worth anything. Take that right off. This is white oak. Old white oak. Old dirty white oak. If I see one comment about dragging the plane back, I swear I'll take the post down. You playing something like I'm working on right now. Or you work with a plane all day. You don't pick it up on the backstroke. You may not put any down pressure on it, but you don't pick it up on every backstroke. All right, that one's gone. Nothing there. I feel a little scallop there. It's fine. Do another one here. And you can see the chips that it took off. That's that. So that was 3 sixteenths off that. And there's, I don't know if you can see this. It's gone. There's nothing there. There's no, there's no hump there at all. There's one more right here. This one's it's pretty dirty down here. Just didn't sit there. would be great. Almost gone. It's gone. You can feel a little scallop right here. Take that out. Right here. Take that out. Nice and smooth now. You can hit the edge here. You can tell from the sound. Still a scallop there. This is smooth. Again, just to show you that that 3 sixteenths is gone. Uh, it's a little high on the outside edge. I'm going to take that off really quick. So right there, camera. So it's a little high right here.
This is a Wood River version 3 iron. A little scallop right there. Well, you can hear the way it's cutting. It's the one I sharpened in the last video. White oak, it's kind of end grain at an angle. So it's all done there. Took off that chunk there, that chunk there, that chunk there. There's a couple up high, but there's a pretty good one right there. But I have to get I have to get myself something to stand on. So I'm gonna get back at it. Obviously it's sharp. See the chunks it took off. Let me get back at it and uh, we've got to try to reposition the machine. The boom's all the way up to the other side so I can get working on this side. But uh, I'm going to run out of video time before I do it. So I'm going to take you guys off. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm also going to do uh, a round over on this edge and re-round the front edge because you can see how much I took off on this side by... If you look at this round over, they have sanded on a round over here. And if you look up here, it's just a sharp edge now. That's how much I had to take off this to get it to get it down. So I'm gonna have to re-round that. Probably round over the it's not focusing. Focus as AVE would say, focus you fuck. I gotta have to uh, clean up that tip. These are gonna get epoxy filled. Come on. Focus. Yeah, there we go. Those are going to get epoxy filled so when it's an outside table, the water doesn't get in there and freeze and rip it apart. Uh, it'll get finished with, it's going to get a ton of mineral oil and then some boiled linseed oil for a finish. And this is going to be an outside table on a patio. A nice 15,000 pound outside table. Uh, it's going to be awesome. But it's going to a flower show first for a display. I don't know how much you guys, if you watched all the videos I did today, you probably heard me and Paul talking in the background. So, all right, I'm going to get back at it. Hope you guys are having a good one. Be safe.